G'day, hikers, and welcome to Hike the Highlands Festival YouTube channel. My name is Tom Wilson, and I'll be your host today as well as your presenter. We have a really great topic today that I'm always excited to talk about, and that is the magic of whales. I had the pleasure to doing a hiking trip not too long ago where I hiked the Pena Fan Mountain in the Brecon Beacons National Park, as well as the very popular Pembrokeshire Coastal Path on the southwest side of, of uh, Wales. What makes Wales special? Well, there's a lot of great things, especially if you're in the walking and hiking field. It has three national parks, the Pembrokeshire Coast, the Brenton Beacons, and of course the Snowdon. 25% of the land in Wales is national park or designated as an area of outstanding beauty. It has three national long distance trails, the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path, the Offa Dyke Path, and the Glen Ayers Way. Wales has 641 castles, 43 blue, bag, blue flag beaches, which are kind of like national beaches. Snowdon Mountain at 3,509 feet is one of UK's Three Peaks Mountains. There's 3 million people live in Wales, 11 million sheep and 700 miles of coastline and two official languages, English and Welsh. Wales also has the Wales Coast Path, 877 miles long, one of the longest uh, walks in the, in, I'd say North America and UK. And the Isle of Anglesey Coastal Path, which I hiked in 2013, has 128 miles in Northern Wales, so a great, great walk too. So we're going to begin with the, the magic that I experienced first, and that was Pena Fan. Uh, normally, I hike a mountain after I do the long distance hike, but this time I decided to do first because of the way the geography worked out that I, when I landed in, in um, uh, when I went to Wales, I, I was, I went to Cardiff and then I came, then I went to Brenton Beacons. So I stayed at Limbanus at the Tyre Bowl Country in Old Place, pronounce that right. Uh, great little spot. Um, and the beauty of Wales is that there's buses going everywhere. And, and if you're a popular hiking spot, they usually have a bus going out and a bus coming back. So I took advantage of the bus situation that day. So the picture to the right is when I got up top to Pena Fan and like normal high mountains, especially over like 2,900 feet, you're going to run into clouds and foggy conditions and, and a little bit of everything. So didn't get a chance to really see the view from there. But as I got down lower when I was coming back, I did get to see a few things. So here's the fan when you could see a whole bunch, but this was down, down at the lower level. So you see those two peaks and uh, you actually will hike uh, when you do the loop, you'll do two of those peaks. And um, I can't remember which way I started. Something tells me I started on the right and then finished on the left. So, um, but it's, it's a beautiful spot to take time to enjoy. Uh, this is when I was coming back down the mountain. Um, and like, you, like I said earlier, when you drop in the elevation, that's when things get a little clearer. And so at the end, you can see the road down below. That's There was a big parking lot there, and that's where the bus picked you up. And there was also a food truck there, so you have a chance to have a bite to eat. And so I'll get a cup of tea. So great little spot. Uh, this is the Burton Beacons National Park uh, Visitor Center. Um, nice, nice location. Uh, great uh, Great things inside besides the interpretive panels and stuff. There's also the um, uh, place where you can shop and, and buy souvenirs and merchandise and, and all those nice things. Um, just a nice little visitor center. So after I finished hiking Pena Fan, I moved on to begin the coast path. So Pembroke Coast Path is 186 miles or 299 kilometers, and I hiked it 14 days. I know a lot of people ask me, what, show, what made you feel that you wanted to do this one? Well, I heard a lot of really good comments that it was one of the better 
and more popular and favored trails to do in the world. And uh, I was turning 60 at the time, so I wanted to do something memorable. And this was um, would be my longest hike ever. So I said, this, this is good. I really want to go ahead. So when you start doing this Pembrokeshire coastal path, you notice that you're ascending and descending a lot. And I understand that you will reach over the 14 days, you will reach over 35,000 feet in total uh, in elevation, more or less uh, during those times. Um, most of my days of hiking were 10 to 14 miles a day, which were reasonable. And then you had those tough days where it was four days of 16 to 20 miles a day, which are a little tougher. Uh, Max Adventure was my tour company and they booked my accommodation and um, got a van to take my luggage each day to the B&B. So that, that was really nice. So I, I walked each day with my day pack, which was 30 liters as well as my trek and poles. And my day pack had snacks, water, my camera gear, my rain gear, and extra clothes. So it, it covered me on all days. So the first day I, I started off in Amaroff. And Amaroff is located more on the east side of, of the uh, Pembrokeshire National Park. And St. Donald's is more on the this more northern part of it. Um, so it's a nice little beach area and you can see to the right, I got a nice shot there. And um, uh, to the right is the actually start of path. So, uh, and, and from my b, &B I had to walk probably a mile and a bit to get to the start and then I had to walk it all the way back again. So anyway, it wasn't, first day wasn't tough at all. It was, I think, I walked to seven plus miles and and um, a few little showers, but nothing serious. And we walked by some great uh, communities, um, um, Saunders Foot, Tanabee, and another one. And uh, they had lots to do. Um, the, the picture in front is the Royal National Life Saving Institute, the, the building that's kind of red and gray. That was the original life station for the boat. And then they build a new one. And that's the one behind that. So um, it, it's a really good, I, I think it's incredible that, that Britain has this type of service that they're out there all the time. They're volunteers. They're kind of like your volunteer fire department, but these guys are out to rescue people in boats and stuff. And just uh, a great service that they provide. And, they're a nonprofit group, so well worth it. Um, we're back in, we're in Tenaby again. So this is um, another one of those blue flag beaches. Um, and then the, when it's low tide there, you can actually walk across to that island and go up and see the fort. Um, so it's a, it's a neat little community and uh, well worth a visit there. So highly recommend that one. So day two was uh, from Tenaby to Manor, Manor Bur Bur, I guess. I hope I got that right. It's 10.5 miles. And probably the most difficult day of the whole, the whole walk. It, it was incredible high winds, like gale force winds at times and heavy rain. So it made the trail really slippery and dangerous. So you had to watch where you where you were walking, and uh, you had to use your poles for balance going up the, um, the uh, sex, certain section of the trail, and also to keep you from blowing over the cliffs. Um, Pembrokeshire Coastal Path has there's not a lot of distance. I would say maybe two feet from the path to going over the cliff. So you want to make sure that you have your poles with you and you plant them, especially on, on days like this. So that picture in the front is where I had to be really careful going around a headlamp. And I was about a kilometer away from, from Manabir. And so it, it paid to be safe, it really did. 
And so once I got into the community, I was lucky the tea room was open. So I stopped in there and got out of the rain and I enjoyed a nice hot cup of tea. I had some snacks and it's a great way to kind of end the day of walk. Um, Washington was uh, uh, a nice treat after the day before. It was sunny most of the day, 10.5 uh, mile day, which is not too, too long. Uh, great coastal scenery, um, a couple of cliffs that look like the cliffs of Mohair in Ireland, uh, nice beaches along the way. Um, again, they were blue flag. Um, Bajerton had a nice small community. Um, they had a pub and they had great food for supper. And uh, so it was a nice little place to stop off. And there's kind of like the picture of the cliffs of Mohair. And moving on to day four, Angle uh, was 12 miles. Um, it was foggy and drizzle today. Um, passed by some really unique buildings and I found Angle an interesting community. And I stayed at Hibernia Inn, which was um, a nice place to go. Uh, you can see the, well, the house to the left. It kind of looked like a castle to the right and then a house in the middle and to the left. So it's just an interesting building. It had a garage to the very far right. And Hibari Inn, that was the place that I stayed. Um, it was uh, beds upstairs and a, kind of like a pub downstairs. Great little spot. Um, Angle had a, a village store, which is great when you, if you had to pick up supplies like um, granola bars or sandwiches or whatever, it was a good spot to stop in. And this was an old hotel to the right. I'm not sure what it's used at or in today, but it was a nice little spot. Uh, day five, Pembroke. Okay. <clears throat> so the biggest thing I noticed that day was how close I was to a lot of oil tankers, forts, and oil refineries on the way to Pembroke. And I had met uh, two hikers the night before in Angle and they said, they asked me where I was staying. I told them, he said, that's where we stayed. And that lady's gonna tell you to leave your boots in the porch and not bring them in to the, to the B&B. &B. And it's because of all the mud. And, and I said, okay. So I was, I was cool with that. And, then, and you couldn't avoid the mud in this section. You, you just literally had to go right through it. Um, so the trail took you underneath the, the pipe for the oil. And then other, other places, they took you above that. And you crossed three bridges. They were all like fenced in, fenced in on the bottom, on the sides, and on the top. So you couldn't fall out but you could see everything. So the first bridge was kind of difficult. And um, so what I did was just looked right across to the end of the other side, and that's how I made it across. And then the next time there was some wood on the bottom and the last time it was covered, so you couldn't see anything. So, but uh, <clears throat> it made for an interesting day. Um, some of the roads and paths that you go on, you'll see that they're, they're covered in by trees and branches and shrubs. And so um, made for another interesting walk that day. Um, Pembrokeshire Coastal Path, this was a long day, 16.5 miles. And I was, I was going from Pembroke to um, uh, Sandy Haven. So, the best part was I started off the day and I walked, I walked by the castle and I got a nice picture, it was nice and calm and stuff. But um, it seemed to like take me a couple of hours just to get out of Pembroke and then and go by Pembroke Dock. And then I had to go through another community called um, Milford Haven. So that seemed to take a long time to get out of that community. So it was... Um, but around lunchtime, I met a couple that I had met a few days before. And she said, I hope you're, um, if you're going to, are you trying to get to the stepping stone? I said, yes. 
Well, he, she said, you better turn it up another gear because you don't have much time. So I said, okay, I did that. So um, make a long story short, I made it to Sandy Haven, but not in time for the stepping stones. So there was a guy across the way and he said, taxi, I said, taxi. I'll take that. <laughs> Cause it was a detour of 4.5 miles. So I said, I'll go. So I went over to see him and he said, are you Tom Wilson? I said, yes. And he said, I'm the B&B uh, owner. And he said, I'm here to pick you up. I had called the B&B in the morning and asked what time you left. So I knew he wouldn't make it in time. So I decided to wait and pick you up. I said, oh, thank you. You don't realize how much that means. He said, when you have a long day, like 16.5 miles and then you have to go another four and bit to get to the B&B. This was a nice treat to have somebody pick you up. So um, I got settled in and they took me to supper at a local pub just down the road called Brook, Brook Inn. And um, at the time I didn't know too much about this inn. And uh, it was a pub. And I noticed when I walked in, everybody was wearing black. I said, oh no, I must be caught in a funeral or something. So anyway, I talked to the, the bartender and he said, no, we're okay. He said, you can get some food. So I ordered supper and it was the best lasagna I had ever had over in Europe. And so I had a nice review for, the, for them uh, on TripAdvisor. And when he drove home, he asked how everything was. And I said, oh, super. And that was his niece and their family had bought that, that in and are doing a great job with it. So uh, he also said the next morning, he said, Tom, it's been raining the last three days here. So I th here's the route I think you should take. So you won't have to, you know, uh, get caught sliding down a, a hill or, or, you know, get injured. So he, so he suggested this and I took it and it was a really good suggestion. So just finishing off uh, that day uh, to Sandy Haven, there was an old fort that I saw when I walked by and I think it's two or 300 years old. It's still standing and it's on a little island. And the famous stepping stones is to the right, except um, it's now replaced by a concrete bridge. Um, you can see that the bridge is not up high. So once the tide comes in, you don't really have much of a chance to make it across. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, you got a couple hours to play with, and that's it. So the next day, I headed to Marital's, which was 13 miles away. Um, I passed by a community called Dale, and uh, unfortunately got caught in the rain as I left that community. But uh, it didn't. the rain didn't last that long, maybe an hour. It was great coastal scenery all the way today. Uh, the community of Marlos had a clock tower, which you can see in the picture to the right. And uh, I stayed at the clock house b, &B ca and cafe and had scepter at the Lobster Pot Inn. Um, and just so you know, the lobster wasn't in season, so I didn't have lobster tonight, but I did have a nice order of fish and chips. Um, moving on the next day, I traveled to Little Haven uh, from Marlos. Um, picture to the right uh, is a castle called St. Bride's Castle. Um, great coastal scenery again on the walk to Little Haven. Little Haven's a nice seaside community. I stayed in a B&B &B that had its own deck or my own deck to the ocean. So I was really pleased. Uh, here's more Little Haven. Picture to the left is the, the uh, the cottage that you pass by when you're heading into the community and then picture to the right is the community. Um, so after Little Haven, my next um, walk was to uh, Slova, which was, I believe it was Lower Slova that I was staying at. Um, I was fortunate after Brook, after Little Haven, you pass by a community called Broad Haven, which had a supermarket, and I was able to get supplies before I could continue on my walk that day. Um, you will climb a bit um, on your way to um, Lower Slova, um, but you do pass by several 
beautiful beaches, including the majestic Moongale. Um, I stayed down by the harbor in Lower Slova and b, &B and next door was an inn and a pub that had, had supper there. And if you notice um, about um, midway through, you'll see a big parking lot and then you'll see a white building in the middle of that parking lot and then a yellow building to the right of that. That, that yellow building is where I stayed in my B&B &B, and the pub was right next door and with the inn. And so you'll see here that this is the community of Broadhaven and the building in the middle was the supermarket. Picture to the top right was the uh, guy flying a drone and it kind of interesting way of, of um, the drone, how he uses the drone. He, he got um, contracted to take a picture for a real estate agent of the house that he's trying to sell and also a little bit about the community and the beaches and all that. And so I said, well, that's an interesting way of using the drone. And just another, the bottom right-hand corner is another beach that you go by. So next community we head towards is called St. David's, 13.5 miles. And the picture to the right shows you the St. Nuns Retreat. It was built in 1929 and the chapel that was built in 1934. Um, you'll see the acorn sign down at the bottom of the left-hand corner. And I didn't realize this actually takes you to St. David's, um, the city of St. David's. I, I thought it was just taking you to the, um, the old nuns, St. Nuns uh, well. Um, I continue on the path and went to Port, Port Clays um, and then I took the trail on to St. David. So I probably walked a little bit longer, but eh, it wasn't that long that much that day. I was in by 2.30, 3 o'clock. So here's the picture of the cathedral. That's really an incredible building. Um, it was originally built in 11, 1181 and over the years restored to more than its former glory in the 12th century, made the oldest part of the building. St. David's is a small city in Britain, small city in Britain, and it qualified for this grand status because of its cathedral. And once you see it in person, you, you understand why. Um, next day I traveled to um, <clears throat> Treflin, 11 miles away. Um, Lots of ascending and descending today. In other words, up and down. Uh, usually start at a beach, start at this beach here in the picture. And it would, took me a little while to get past the two mountain peaks and you'll see them in the next picture. So you'll pass by the communities of Aberetti and, and Port Gain on your way to Treflin. So there's the two peaks and uh, you can see it's a little up and down. Um, and that was pretty well the whole way. And you pretty well get used to that in the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. Top uh, right hand corner is an old burial site. And top right hand or the bottom right hand corner, it just shows you some of the steepness of the trail. And especially when you're going up rock and you just pray that it's not wet and you slide down. Uh, here's the um, a little cove at Aberready that was used for um, the Red Bull High Diving Championships. And uh, it, incredible how high they, they go up, it's just amazing. Uh, picture to the top right-hand corner is uh, the harbor at Port, Port Gain. And the bottom right-hand corner is when you come into that harbor from the path, you tend to go on the right-hand side of, uh, of the harbor going into the community. Um, they had lots of places to eat that day in there and it was uh, seemed like a popular place to visit. Um, we're getting close. This is the third, uh, third last day of the hike. Um, this is a long day, 20.5. Um, picture to the right is the Strumble Head Lighthouse built 1902 and well worth a stop and visit. I took quite a few pictures of that. Um, Goodwood is where you get the ferry to Ireland. 
uh, very impressive breakwater at the entrance to the harbor. And here's the picture to the left, you can see that. And one of the ferries that takes you to Arnhem. And the bottom right hand corner is the B&B &B that I stayed at. Um, you can't really tell from that picture. I mean, you might maybe if I look at some rentals and stuff, but that place was over 150, over 150 years old, good shape. So now we're in the second last day of, of the hike. Uh, we're leaving Goodwick and we will pass by Fishguard and Lower Fishguard communities. The photo to the right is the Fishguard Fort built in 1781 and later used in World War II. You will pass by, and I'm gonna say Church Valley. I don't know how to pronounce that in Welsh on your way to Newport. Newport is a, a pretty big community, it has a Royal National Life Institute uh, station, uh, a yacht club, a castle, and much more. Um, on your way to Newport, you, you pass by a caravan on the path, and this horse kind of blocked me in for a little bit, but he, he was nice. He, after a couple of minutes, he let me go by and everything was cool. Um, you can see the cairns on the right, top right-hand corner. And on the bottom is that church that I talked about. Uh, there was two big storms uh, in the last 60 some years and took, took most of that church out to sea. So all you see is the last part, probably about a third of the church is left. Uh, but it's kind of, it's still important to the community and they keep looking after it. Um, on your way to Newport, you'll, you'll see a little bridge across and a picture down below that is the kiln. Most communities in Wales seem to have a lot of kilns on the beaches and stuff. Um, or relatively near the community. The uh, top right-hand corner is the Newport Castle, and the bottom right-hand corner is the B&B &B that I stayed at. So we're moving on to the last day. St. Dogmos, I hope I pronounced that right, 16 miles. Um, more up and down, walking along the coast. The last three miles were kind of anticlimactic. Um, as you walk road and and most hikers don't like doing that. But anyway, that was that was the way it ended. Um, across the road from the Royal National Life, Life Institute building at Poppet Sands was a cafe. I stopped in for a cup of tea. And the photo to the right is my last step on the walk at St. Donald's. And there's the Royal Nation Life Saving Institute on the left. Uh, top right hand corner was a really interesting uh, building house that I don't normally see in North America. Bottom right corner is the church at St. Donald's. Um, the big picture on the left is the Ferry Inn. And when you finish the walk, you can go there and they'll print you out your certificate and you can take that home. Um, there's also <clears throat> picture on the top left hand corner is the um, kind of like the beginning of the trail if you do it from St. Donald's back. And that's a picture of me doing a little selfie. So I'd just like to thank everybody for uh, taking the time to watch this video and to get to know Pena Fan and Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. Uh, Wales is definitely magical and special and I hope you hope to get there a few more times for hikes. And closing, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for stopping in to Hike Times YouTube channel. Thank you, bye for now.